All right, y'all. So uh, next up, next topic. So, you know, a few weeks ago, we told you guys in the after show um, how to deal with a breakup. But now we're going to get into some behaviors that will most certainly get you dumped by your partner, get you kicked to the curb, um, get you back on um, the, that unemployment line looking for somebody else to be with. Eight different behaviors that will get you dumped. So Simple. Small things that we don't pay attention to, but these are the slow burns. Oh, yeah. And after, after a while, they will take a nice chunk at your relationship and you're like, yo, but I thought everything was okay. But meanwhile, you've been getting on my nerves for the last two years. Damn, that's 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 not that's not my two case. years. The burn is that's, crazy. That's not my case, but that's what the article is talking about. I have a very happy, loving relationship. Love it. <laughs> no, I really do. I really do. I'm so happy. That's dope. That's dope. Yes. All right. So first, uh, first behavior that will get you dumped: struggling with compromise. Beware the outsized ego, the part of your psyche that must be right, must win the fight, must get your way. Uh, it makes you dumpable because your partner feels they're with someone selfish who never compromises and is hardly the ideal mate. I have been the uh, the initiator in this type of situation in my life, and I have also been the victim of this type of shit in my life as well mm-hmm. when it comes to struggling with compromise. The OGs will tell you that a happy wife... Happy wife, happy life. Happy life. The OGs will also say... Um, <laughs> That you're uh, that she's always right, and you're you're never right. Uh, the OGs will also whisper to you, "Don't get married," right? So those are the things the OGs will say. I just wanted to share those things the OGs did. The say. OGs message changes every month. No, but they always whisper the same thing. Happy wife, happy life is a, is a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. It's, a it's, thing. it's funny when I was at um I was at like the Father's Day dinner with my dad and family. We heard somebody at the other table say, "Happy wife, happy life." And all the ladies at the table with us were like, like, yeah, this nigga's spitting. You know, you have to definitely meet each other in the middle. It's really important to admit when you're wrong. It's very important to not have too much pride so that you don't apologize to your partner. And like I said, I know personally for me, like, it's been a long journey when it comes to, like, compromising. I wasn't always the best with it throughout my life, not just in relationships, but in life in general. So I feel like I've come a long way. But then I also feel like I've been in situations where another person, like other people I've dated, haven't wanted to compromise also. Yeah. But I feel like, you know. Healthy balance, man. It has to be a healthy balance. Balance is important, indeed. Um, knowing when, knowing what battles to pick, what battles to, to fight, what battles to not fight. Yeah. Knowing when you're wrong. Um, I know as men, we tend to, we tend to, I actually, it's funny, I seen a guy the other day. Uh, this is actually a really good point. So uh-huh. I was walking past and I seen a gentleman the other day arguing with his girl. Mm-hmm. And like she wasn't really paying him no mind, and he was like getting tight. Mm-hmm. And then like she said something, like look at look at you don't even know how to talk. Da 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 da. It's not how you talk to a lady. Da 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 da. And he squared up. <laughs> so like, his war to his woman. He's like, what what like that? And it was like you know what? In that moment, it's sometimes somebody might say something that will get you escalated to a higher level. But you always have to remember that like yo, that's your partner. You don't have to go toe to toe with Shorty. No, you it's don't. Not, it shouldn't you be don't that. Have to, you don't have to win every battle with Shorty because this is my partner. No, I used, so I used to be that. It's not about that. I used right? to be the nigga that had to win every battle. Next up, acting out when you're disappointed. Mm. Do you sulk, scream, or mm. cause trouble when things don't go your way? It's one thing to struggle with compromising, but it's another to put on a whole show to make your partner feel guilty for having needs and desires of their own. That's deep. I mean, what is some like? I guess like an example of acting out when you're disappointed is like silent treatment or yeah, slick like, talk, all right. shit like that. Here's a common. Here's a common one. I think. Okay. Like so, when you expect like your girl to come over, and she's like, you know, like I'm too tired. I want to come over, and now uh-huh. you're tight. So you're gonna be like, all right, all right, all right. And you do all those all right and short and stuff. That's like the sulking and stuff like that because you didn't get your way, and that's like the little pouting stuff. Yeah. And like low key, I'm learning that. That stuff is not healthy, you know. It's not. It's the passive aggressive shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I used to be it. very. I used to be. I used to be very fluent in passive oh, aggressive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very fluent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those doesn't work. Doesn't work though. No. Does not work at all. Uh, when you're disappointed, it's more important just to have that discussion. It says you have to take care of yourself and find a way to solve problems and motivate your partner to work with you. Uh, partnership is the name of the game. Not I want you to take care of me and I'll throw a temper tantrum if you don't. Yeah. I think, it's, I think it's important for men and women, uh, importantly, 
mostly women, importantly, but like men and women together. But it's very important to not like make your partner feel guilty about um, the things that they do. And actually, um, I watched a video the other day, and the gentleman was saying for successful marriages to work, um, you have to allow your partner to do the things that they w- want to do. Mm-hmm. So that when they go to do those things, they're not like, well, now my girl's tight that I'm here or now that my man is tight that I'm here and I really can't fully enjoy that. So now I'm resenting the time that I'm having. So it's very important to say, like, to like go in peace. But I generally want you to have fun because I generally want you to have wants, a good time. Don't nobody want niggas having fun. I know. I know. They don't want us to have fun. Don't nobody want niggas having fun. But every day I try to execute and plan and... Um, don't nobody <laughs> want niggas having fun. That's a fact. So that's a both cameras. That's a fact. That's a fact. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Good time with my dogs. You did what? <laughs> no, no, no. Bad time with the with the homies. Like, hey, how's your night out? It sucks. Oh, that, those man. are the text messages I get the most. Oh love. man, wish I was with you. Shit was weak. I don't know where this nigga Lamar got me out of yeah. this club. I hate clubs. This music is trash. Oh, bad set from the DJ. Can't stand these drinks. Hey, say Palooza. What? What you doing? <laughs> <laughs> All right, number three. Oh, this is big. Hiding things from your partner will get you dumped. Yeah. We all tell little white lies here and there. Don't move funny style, man. But the foundation of a strong relationship is emotional openness and honesty. Yeah. It's too easy for lots of people, men especially, since they're typically socialized not to talk about their feelings, to keep quiet around what's really going on with them can't hide things from your partner no your partner should be your best friend and if you have a best friend you know that when shit goes down you call your best friend you hit him up yeah you hit him up and you let them know what's going on and dudes like you spend the most time in your life with your partner generally if you're doing things right so that should be your best friend and that should be the person that you can find in and speak to about the things that you're going through um i've developed that relationship and like my girl's the first person I tell everything that goes on, and the first person mm-hmm. I run through things with. If not the first person I run through things with, then she's the last person I literally go over things before I make a decision anyway. So okay. it's either the first line or the last line of defense, but she's a part of those decisions. So there's no blind spots in our relationship because I'm like, yo, this is what's going on. This is what I'm struggling with. This is what I'm dealing with. I'm broke this week. So easy on the yummy taco. <laughs> okay, one quesadilla <laughs> each. That's what we're going to do. One quesadilla <laughs> each. Sometimes I'll be wilding. So I'll be telling her so she can tell me that is my case of the age. Um, but you have to be what you're going through. It's you important. got you got to communicate those things. Uh, secrets, withholding parts of your past, not sharing your day to day life. These can feel like larger deceptions to your partner. If your partner feels that you're hiding the real you behind a mask, that can weaken your that can weaken your mutual connection. Um, I think it's really important to definitely not hide those things. And that's why I feel like initial communication, like when a relationship starts about, you know, your standards, your quality of life, the things that you'll accept, the things that you won't, parts of your past that you feel like are important are good. Because, I mean, I know I've been in, I think everybody's been in situations where it's like you're with somebody and then they find out something about your past that you feel like, that they feel like you should have told them and vice versa. You know, this is so funny. I don't know why I have these are so funny moments. But um, so Kim and I, our stories that we met uh, on Instagram initially, mm-hmm. right? So when I flew in from New York, I mean from LA to New York for the weekend, we went on a date. And in this date, like I kind of like try to do too much. Like I try to squeeze in like four different dates in one. Okay. But it all, it all worked out. Everything worked out, honestly, because I'm here two years later strong. So mm-hmm. strong, yeah, strong, yes, yeah, super strong. strong. So you can't really knock the uh, the game plan. But something that we did do on our on our first initial day is we sat down at this bar in Astoria called Brick, and we both opened our Instagram like this. And you know how Instagram um, tells you your mutual friends. Mm-hmm. So we went through our each other's mutual friends, uh-huh. and we just kept it a thorough bean on our first. Real day interacting with each other. Yo, this is so and so. This is I talked to so and so. Da 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 da. And it worked because the list was short on both sides. Thank the Lord. But <laughs> it worked. We kept it a bean, and we from that day forward, there was no because we're both we came from different schools, but there was a lot of mixes. So yeah. like we'll be in the same room with with other people, and that can be uncomfortable for a partner. But mm-hmm. there was none of that because we knew from day one these are the people that we both know. That was brave. Super brave. That was super very risky. Brave. But then I mean, different. I, I, it was a different move on my part. It was. I mean, I felt like it was. 
I mean, I, listen, like you, like you said, you don't want to fix nothing that is broke because like it's something that led you to the position that you're in right now, right? Right, right, right. right. Um, in ooh, ooh, I'm gonna talk about it. Let shit off. So in my situation, hey. uh, yeah, <laughs> in my situation, like I, I met who I'm with right now during. Oops. Quarantine, like COVID times, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm letting shit off on the King's Speech podcast. So it was more like the communication and the time together was just so like focused. You know, there weren't a lot of distractions. So right, right. I feel like a lot of my history and standards and, you know, honest what you want your quality of life to be, honest conversation was really, it really you couldn't avoid it. Right. Because then if you don't have that, if you're not communicating that way, then there's really nothing else to do. So, I, from two people who kind of done the same thing, I think what we're saying is initially, when you start talking to someone, start the relationship on honesty. Oh, yes, because then you trust. don't want to waste anybody's time. So, you don't also. waste anybody's time. You know, this is what I'm about. This is, this is who I am. This is what makes me the way I am. This is like you have to really, to be in a relationship, it has to start with knowing yourself first. Right? Oh, yes. You know, that's I, a bar. I think, I, think that's, I think that's the first thing. And like for me, before I dated my current girlfriend, I was single for two years. With minimal distractions, right? Doesn't Drake have a Know Yourself song? Drake has Drake has a song don't, called don't Know talk, Yourself. Don't talk about Drake quotes. If you don't <laughs> quote, don't quote niggas you don't listen to. Okay, if you don't know him, I know the song exists. No, I know that he does have a song called Know Yourself. I but know. it's about knowing yourself, knowing who you are, what you're about, knowing what your last relationship did to you, and and how that shaped the way you view relationships mm-hmm. um, and the things that you want from relationships and the things you don't want from relationships. And now I can articulate that to my new partner yeah. and see if that lines up. Do we line? Cool, let's take it from there. All right, next up. Failing to keep your word. Uh, there's another way to determine trust that has less to do with your partner and more to do with you. The inability to keep promises. This could be, uh, this could be being late to dinner because you went out for drinks with your pals first or taking money from a shared bank account to pay for a bad habit. Ooh. If you're struggling with compulsive behavior such as overeating, gambling, drugs, alcohol, or spending money, and you keep breaking promises, you destroy the trust in your relationship and eventually the love. Be honest, right? Just be honest. <laughs> Just be honest, my man. Be I don't know. If I'm, if I'm taking money out of the joint you know, bank account for crack, I don't know how <laughs> yeah, forthcoming I'm, with, I'm, I'm with about that. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I can't relate. That no, that, I cannot. I cannot. Weird. I cannot relate to taking money out of a joint bank account for crack. That I cannot. Or, or even I have just, never been like in robbery. that situation. So to me, it's more about. For me, keeping your word is more so just like for me something like I had to check myself with is over promising. Okay. Right? So like when I read this, I tried to just like yo, how does this apply to me in my life? And mm-hmm. it was just like yo, keeping my word means not to over promise. So like if I'm like yo, in two weeks we're gonna go hit the botanical gardens. Like I remember like that was like a thing, and I kept. Pushing it off, pushing mm-hmm. it off. Um, that wasn't me being a man of my word. Mm. Like just because I didn't want to go, I already had said I want. I, w- I wanted to do it, or yeah. I, w- I would go. So I can't push that off now. Stay true to what I, I promised I was going to do. If I said we're going to do this, or we're going to watch this chick flick, or eat at this stupid Ooh. sushi restaurant, you watching? Kidding. You watching chick flicks? Um. I haven't in a while. She actually made me watch Saw for the first time the other day. Saw? I never seen Saw. I, I haven't seen, seen it in a long time. I haven't seen it in years. It was different. That is not a chick flick. I was, I was, that, was not a chick, <laughs> that is not a chick flick. That is not a chick flick. I was freaking out. But just, so for me, it was like, don't overpromise. If I, like, if I said we're going to do something, stick to that as best as I can. Yes. Or say that I'm going to do something within reason of doing it, you know? Yes, because then it makes it seem like you're just bullshitting. Right, and I don't want to be a bullshitter. Yeah, I hear you. Right? Definitely. So that's, um, that's for me. Keep your word, you know, don't overpromise. Uh, and also, you know, like I just said, like if you're saying and promising a bunch of shit that you can't keep up with, that's just gonna make you look like a bullshitter and make you look like you're just saying shit to get the pussy or saying shit to keep the pussy when essentially you should be rewarding your woman with your honesty and your word. It's a very simple thing. You gotta you gotta have faith in your partner and what they say. <sighs> Let me say something. Seriously, seriously, seriously. Mm-hmm. Relationships take so much work. Right. Yes. The amount of work, I never knew how much work it required to be in a in a committed, faithful, um, time tested relationship, like that continually continues to go and go and go. Yes. It takes a lot of work, right? So, like for me, starting over <laughs> and doing like you know what I'm saying, like to do this, like people who go go from one to another, like God bless because you have strength. <laughs> okay, that's what I have to say because this takes work, and with that work. There are great fruits to your labor. 
I think if you work hard at your relationship, it doesn't feel like work. It doesn't feel like work. No, absolutely. And you have fun doing it. Yeah, so much but fun. It does, but it does require a level of focus and commitment yeah. to the work it takes Listening. To make I feel it work. like listening. I feel like in the past two or three years, the biggest thing that I've added to my arsenal is listening. Listening. I was a horrible listener. Yeah. Listening, as listening. A young man. Yeah, listening is tough. Listening is horrible. a very hard thing. Yeah. It's tough. You gotta remember especially, shit. Especially if you're easily triggered. Because sometimes when you're listening, a word might set you off. And then you might want to interject. Mm. Uh yeah, that's true too. Right? Like like so, like you never let somebody fully get off their message because like you want to either correct that small part, but like listening is actually taking the entire message, processing that, and then responding. But you got to gotta work on those triggers before you get into a relationship. Thousand percent, though. thousand percent, and you need to be aware of those triggers. Everyone has them, and I don't think it's it's a clear thing to just be like, hey, like I'm gonna eliminate my triggers, but either conscious by, of it, either with you're conscious of it, either with like time alone or therapy. Like yes. you need to yes. understand like this triggers me and because then people are victims of your triggers. Yes. People become yes. automatic yes. like yes. victims of like punching bag yes. and shooting range uh, bullseyes for your triggers. And, and they're really not the had person. nothing to do with them. All exactly. they said was like, yo, you're stepping on my toe. Exactly. But you just bugged out because. Stepping on my toe? Yeah. You just wanted a while. 